Today, we're having a Tar Star three-way. Let's go. I'm gonna show you the most classic tartar protein. We'll do a beef tartar, salmon tartar, and I was thinking seafood or vegetable, but you know what? Why do you call a fucking vegetable tartar? It doesn't make any sense. We'll do a scallop tartar. Let's get going, baby. First thing first, the OG tartar, if you will. We're using today some beautiful New York strip. I got two of them because I have two hungry boys behind the cameras. And we're gonna do the classic one because you know what? It's my favorite and you need to know it, so. Very basic uh, ingredients, we have the capers, you can use chicken eggs, I have some quail eggs because you know, we're going fancy. Some cornichon, some Dijon mustard, I got the grainy ones because I like it better. Some, uh, this sauce that no one can pronounce right. Worcestershire, 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 Worcestershire sauce. Shallot, parsley, pretty much it. Let's start with cutting the beef. Make sure you always have a very sharp knife. I wanna get all the fat off of this piece of meat here. We'll just cut like this first. And then we can just kind of like go in here. And get that meat. Same thing here. And same for this one. Cut in half first. At first I was like, I need some beautiful beef for a tartar. Got like this shitty, like sad pink piece of fucking like supermarket beef. I was like, bro, it's for a video. Now that all your pieces of beef are cleaned up, and also for me, it's like always a preference. You can use bavette, you can use flank steak, you can use tenderloin, you can use sirloin. It's really a matter of like texture and taste. So first step, we'll just do some slices like this. And also again, you know, some people like it super coarse. Some people like it, like it super like fine and like almost like, like ground beef. I like to have a little bite in my tartare. So this is kind of the thickness you're looking for. And then you can cut it in nice little cubes. That's perfect for me. Once that's done, I like to switch to another knife because it's easier for the chopping. Take your little piles of beef like this and then you just start chopping like that. Like a meat julienne. And then once you're done doing this, you can chop it in nice little cubes. All done with cutting the beef. Now for the next step, very important. Every time you make tartare, Always, always keep your bowl on ice. You know, sometimes you may be a little slow for your, your cutting or your, just your preparation. So keep that on ice, it's gonna stay cold. You don't have to worry about it. It's always gonna be safe. So we'll put the beef right in there. Boom. And see now, beef is safe. It's cold, we're good. We can start taking care of the other ingredients. We have some capers here. Probably gonna use most of it, I guess. This should be good. So that's capers that we already rinsed, and we're just gonna chop these quickly. Again, guys, you know it's always a matter of taste. You want it finer, go finer. You like a little, little bite to your capers? You know, you can even leave them whole if you want. There's no rose in tartare. So we're gonna scoop that right into our bowl here. Perfect. Now we have some cornichons, which are like, you know, tiny little pickles, I guess. We're gonna do like, Mm. That was vinegary. Just packing juice. So we're just gonna cut some fine slices like this. And then we cut some nice little dice. Okay, cornichon, right in there. Next ingredient, a shallot. It's gone. We're probably gonna use only like a quarter of this massive shallot. Cut into small little cubes. Fine dices, now like this. Okay, shallots in the bowl. See that fine dice, you know? That's all you want. Oh, oh my God. Shallot in here. Again, you know, it's personal. If you want less shallot, just put less shallot. I like mine with, uh, you know, on the oniony side of it, you know? Next, we have some parsley. Make sure it's clean. I just like to roll it real tight and then just chop it. That should be enough. Uh, Back in our bowl. We're done with the chopping. That's good news. Now it's gonna be time for seasoning. We're gonna use some grainy mustard. You can also use the regular old style mustard, but I like the little grainy. Also, some people put mayo in there sometimes. Some people even put ketchup. I've seen a bunch of French chefs putting ketchup, and you know what? It's kind of good. So we'll do one and two big scoops of mustard for now. We'll do a couple drops of the sauce that no one can pronounce. A couple drops in there. Pepper, lots of pepper in there. I'm using here coarse salt, or also called in French, fleur de sel. 
You can use flaky salt or even regular salt. Just nice to have a little texture, I feel like, in the little crackling salt in there, you know? Keep in mind that you have already capers that are salty in there and pickles, so don't go too crazy. And then a bit of olive oil. I'm using here the best olive oil in the world. Just to make everything nice and shiny. I like my tartare with a bit of spice, guys. So you know what I'm gonna use today? The fucking homie DP's hot sauce. Louisiana style. It's kind of like the closest thing I can get to, like I guess Tabasco or Frank's, but you know, just 10 times better. Shout out to Heartbeat. Shout out to DP. That's a good amount. So I'm gonna use two yolks from this guinea fowl eggs. The yolk is 26 or 25 grams of protein compared to a regular chicken egg that's only six grams. I was like, damn, son, protein me up. So let's go. I'm gonna hit the gym after this. <laughs> you think fucking Arnold is using steroids? Uh-uh, he's eating five of those bad boys every morning. Oh yeah. And now we're gonna mix this up and taste it and see if we can add anything to it. Sometimes, you know what, for me, little victories are just, you mix it and then you taste it and then first try. It's amazing. You're like, wow, not even salt to add, like life is good. It's like, a, it's like it's like the same feeling when you take a shit and you don't need to wipe, you know? It's like, really? That easy? Little victories, guys. Once it's fully mixed, uh, get a little taste. It's not a first try, but it's very close. Okay, time to plate. You don't have to use this thing, but you know what? I like it, it's gonna be nice. And I have a little surprise coming for this tartare here. Now you're gonna tell me it's a big fucking tartar, and it is. But you know, we have friends here. You may think we're done here, guys. And we're almost done, but I'm not stopping there. Shout out to the homies at Action for this little last minute delivery of caviar. Elliot, my G. Oh, almost blasphemy. Never use metal with caviar, guys. Something happens in there, change of the, the flavor profile of the caviar. That's how you take your $10 tartar to a $300 tartar. But you know what, guys? Sometimes, like I said, you need to treat yourself. And then we'll just lift this up. Yo, it's like a fucking meat cake. That's crazy. So you might think, enough with the eggs, Laurent. Well, guess what? One little baby quail yolk right in there. Now you might ask me, where are you gonna serve this, Laurent? Some good old fashioned croutons? That's why you're wrong. I have a better thing for you. It's called Fucking OG Miss Vicky's. This is the best vessel I can think of for tartar. Oh my God, all right. Oh my God. Okay guys, let's try this fucking tartar. Mm. You know, even with all the caviar guys, this, this would be amazing. But this little extra pop from the eggs, a little brininess, and the chips. Best vessel. Next tartar. Next up, one of the most popular fish tartar you can find, salmon tartar. Got some beautiful organic Canadian tartar here from Canada. So first step is to cut the salmon here. What I'm gonna do is, first of all, take the skin off. I also wanna get rid of this extra fat here that we don't need. You know when they leave like that gray fucking fat from under the skin, it's like, who wants gray salmon in their tartar, you know? Take your time, guys, make it nice. You kind of wanna get underneath like this, grab the skin when you can, and then you just slice. Voila. And that's what I was talking about, guys. Here, you know? You don't want this fuck, you know? It's like, uh, you like your friends, like your family, you know, serve them some sad gray salmon? No, no, no. Just take the bare minimum. Now that we have some beautiful pieces of salmon, no fat, no gray, nothing, we're good to start slicing. So like the beef, kind of go like this here and do some nice thin slices. That's perfect. Again, you know, it's personal. If you like it thicker or thinner, you know, it's up to you. That works for me. Same as earlier, I'm gonna switch knife and just chop, chop. Always work with your bowl sitting on ice, like so. Boom. Now time for the aromatics. We're gonna do red onion, the zest, and the juice of these beautiful citrus fruit. We have lemon, lime, and a blood orange, some cilantro, bit of mustard, olive oil, 
salt, pepper, and we're Gucci. And for your onions, my advice is cut it as fine as you can because no one likes a big piece of raw onion. It's all gonna taste, so. I guess also like the, the, the rule of thumb is should be that everything that you cut is smaller than your protein. So keep everything smaller than your salmon in this case. So onion, right in there. Next, we'll do the cilantro. Again, like the parsley, make sure you clean that shit up because it's always full of sand and dirt. We're not gonna take the leaves off. We're just gonna roll this up very tight and chop it really fine like this. Not too much because it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of powerful, you know? Okay, cilantro. Pew right in there as well. So we'll do zest of one lemon. Okay, that's done. Next up, zest of one lime. Okay, perfect. Lime zest, all done. And now, blood orange. I don't want the tartar to be too juicy, so I don't want to put the juice. What I'm gonna do instead of put some segments in there. And what that does, it leaves you with a perfectly peeled orange, and you can just kind of like take the little white membrane off like this. But just pretty much done. And then we're gonna cut some Supremes like this. So you wanna go between the lines, like so, and then just falls in the bowl, boom. If you don't think you can do the, seg the segments, you can always just use the juice, it's totally fine. But this will bring more texture and more flavor to your tartare. And I just wanna do like a quick little chop to these segments. So like, like I said before, everything needs to be smaller than the, than the protein. I'm just gonna chop these up a little bit. Add these right to the bowl here. Lime segment, it's gonna be trickier, it's very small. No, same thing for these. And last but not the least, the lemon here. This might be fucking sour or fucking awesome, I'm about to find out. I think it's gonna be good though. I think I'm just gonna start on this vinaigrette here. And by vinaigrette, I just mean some, uh, some citrus juice, some olive oil. Woo! Oh yeah, now, juice here, tartars here. Now, time to mix it up. Now, for a little kick in there, you know, to make it more exciting, add some salsa verde hot sauce. This, beautiful. And now, we're just gonna mix that up. Now we have to work fast, guys, because we're gonna add the, the citrus vinaigrette in there, and that's gonna start cooking our salmon. But it's not a fucking ceviche, guys, it's a tartar. So you're gonna make sure you work fast. So we're gonna put the vinaigrette in there. Should be good for now. Mix, mix, mix. A little taste test. Mmm, wow, low key. I never even order salmon tartar, I don't even like it, but this one, woo! That's the first try, actually. Remember that thing about first try earlier I was saying with the beef tartare? It's like the same feeling when you take a shit and you don't need to wipe, you know? It's like, it just happened just now. No more salt needed. Perfect citrus balance. Let's plate it. Again, going with the little ring there because it's easier. Now, for the garnish, we're gonna do, we're gonna use, I never really use microgreens to be honest. I think it's like, it's too easy, but I saw those at the store. It's micro cilantro. So, you know, makes sense. Just gonna go like this. And that to me is a perfect salmon tartare. Guess what? Same vessel, Miss Vicky's. Let's get in there. None of that nonsense tartar with all this mayo and mustard all the time. It's always like creamy. It's like, who wants creamy salmon, you know? This is nice and fresh. It's almost summertime. That's what I want. Mmm. Mmm. I feel like I was like fucking Jake Paul about to get punched in. Okay. <laughs> wow, that was an insane explosion of flavor in my face. It was like I was getting punched by Jake Paul, Tyson at the same time. Gregor was in there as well. That was, did you say Gregor? Meg Gregor. <laughs> I just said Gregor, right? Who the fuck is that guy? That was a crazy bunch of flavors, guys. It was like, Tyson was like uppercut on this side and Jake Paul came in with a big fucking jab. And then, what's his face? Meg Gregor just, Gave me a fucking kick in the face, and then, you know, and I'm just like, kind of like, Oof, where am I? Who am I? What is this? Last but not least, the scallop tartare. Because we have the meat, the 
fish, and now seafood. Keep it simple, we're gonna do Lebanese cucumber, grindsmith apple, chives, parsley, red onion, salt, pepper, olive oil, and some salsa verde. We have one intruder in here. It's yellow for some reason. Someone told me what they were sweeter at some point. You gotta make sure there's no more mussels left. These are already cleaned up, we're good to go. You wanna just kind of like chop it, same as earlier, stack them up. And once you're done with the stacking up, chop, chop, chop. There you go. That's how you do it. That's our scallop all chopped up. We're gonna put this on ice again, obviously. Especially when you're working with seafood or fish, make sure you're always keeping everything nice and cold. Okay, again, we're gonna start with some red onion. Again, fine dice. Okay, onion right in there. That should be enough. Next, cucumbre. So we're gonna do is cut this into nice little dices. Okay, cucumber in. Next up, some chives. All right, let's chop it nice and fine. Take your time. Chives is joining the party, guys. Next, we're gonna do some beautiful flat parsley. Okay, parsley in the party. Boop. Next, apple, Granny Smith. You might say it's weird, but it's delicious. Why? There's a nice acidity to it, and it's gonna be perfect to bring some uh, freshness to our tartar. And then keep your stack in place like this. And now get your sticks, put them back all in the same direction like this and build this little row of apple sticks and then dice it up. Okay, apple in the bowl. So we're gonna zest your mom's limes and then we're gonna make some segments again. Lime segments in there. Put some salsa verde in there. A couple squirts like that, that should be good. Some of the best olive oil in the world again, you know. Generous with the oil, black peppy. Time to mix it up. Time for a little taste test. It's the first try. It's perfect. Okay, time to plate. Now, again, we're gonna take some shortcuts here, guys. We're gonna use some micro arugula for the garnish. A nice, pretty nice little peppery freshness to our tartar. It's so like 90s, but it's also, you know, it's nice. Oh, and now to keep it super fresh, instead of using croutons or the good old chips that we're already out of anyways, I'm gonna use some beautiful Endives. So we're gonna do some endives here like this. And now it's the final tasting time. Let's try it. I'm gonna do a little scoopy scoop here. Fill this bad boy up like this. And she goes. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. This is so fucking fresh. Imagine like you're in the middle of a jungle and then you're hot. You're sweating. You know it's heavy. It's we just wanna get some nice fresh water or just a drink, you know? And then what do you hear? Oh, what are you, is that, is that a waterfall? And the next thing you know, it's pristine water coming down this beautiful mountain and you're by yourself or with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. And then you just decide to take your clothes off, go for a little dip, and then you feel refreshed. Well, if you don't want to do this, you can just have, you know, make a scallop tartar. Same feeling, same, same. On that note, if you want to go and swim in a beautiful, pristine water waterfall, please subscribe like this video and let me know in the comments which one was your favorite tartar and i'll see you on the next episode of always hungry until next time